O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt you thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh for them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the ninth chapter of the Book of Wisdom, beginning at the first verse. O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who hast made all things by thy word and by thy wisdom hast formed man to have dominion over the creatures thou hast made and rule the world in holiness and righteousness and pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give me the wisdom that sits by thy throne and do not reject me from among thy servants. For I am thy slave and the son of thy maidservant, a man who is weak and short-lived, with little understanding of judgment and laws. For even if one is perfect among the sons of men, yet without the wisdom that comes from thee, he will be regarded as nothing. Thou hast chosen me to be king of thy people, and to be judge over thy sons and daughters. Thou hast given command to build a temple on thy holy mountain and an altar, the city of thy habitation, a copy of the holy tent which thou didst prepare from the beginning. With thee is wisdom, who knows thy works, and was present when thou didst make the world, and who understands what is pleasing in thy sight, and what is right according to thy commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens, and from the throne of thy glory send her, that she may be with me and toil, that I may learn what is pleasing to thee. 
for she knows and understands all things, and she will guide me wisely in my actions and guard me with her glory. Then my works will be acceptable, and I shall judge thy people justly and shall be worthy of the throne of my Father. Here ends the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the fourth chapter of the Epistle to the Galatians, beginning at the first verse. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Here ends the second lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Confident that God hears us when we cry out to him in our need, we now place our petitions before him. We pray for Archbishop Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury for Bishop Graham, our bishop, for his suffragan bishops. We pray for all entrusted with leadership of the church at this difficult time. We pray for the benefits of Colgate and Tombland. We pray for a growth of God's spirit in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocesan prayer calendar today, we pray for the deanery of Durham in Mitford and their rural dean, Mark McCaffrey, and lay chair, Sheila Hamner. We pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Diocese of Matana in Burundi and their bishop, Seth Nadeyurukie, the bishop of Wad Medani in the Sudan, and their bishop, Saman Farahalamadi, and the Diocese of Hyderabad in Pakistan and their Bishop Kalim John. We pray for the unity of all Christians. We pray for Francis, the Bishop of Rome, and Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for all entrusted with civic authority. We pray especially for all those with the important decisions to make in this time of crisis, that they may bear in mind the needs of the poor and the vulnerable when making their decisions, and that all of us may support the poor and the vulnerable in these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and for all who suffer, especially those sick with the coronavirus, we, we pray for healthcare professionals and researchers, for all who work 
in shops and delivery services, which are still open, which allow us to get viable food, medicine, and supplies. We pray for those family and friends who have asked for our prayers, especially those on our prayer list at St. George Tombland, and those resting in the church, in the altar at St. George Colgate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, for refugees, for prisoners, for all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whom we have injured or those whom we have offended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, and those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially our families and friends and relatives, people we hold dear. We pray for our beloved dead, and we pray for all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radic, Salve Porta, Ex qua mundo lux est torta. Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Super Omne Speciosa, Vale Ovalde Decora, Et pro nobis Christum exora. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all good things, you have blessed this house with the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through her intercession, hear the prayers of all who come to this place and surround them with your watchful care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.